Now, as we've been hearing in the news this morning, France has taken the first steps towards effectively banning the burqa. Now, we covered the story yesterday, didn't we, and had more than 2,000 texts and emails from you, around 90% of you thinking the UK should follow the French. So what is it like wearing a burqa in modern-day Britain? Well, we met 26-year-old Sarin Chowdhury, who's a teaching assistant in an Islamic primary school, to find out. The first time I wore the veil, um, I had to travel to South London, and um, I didn't expect the you know, reaction I got. You know, people were looking and staring, and women, they just give a really horrid look. Horrid look as if they're disgusted by what I'm wearing. Um, I get the same look from men, but some men um, do tend to say vile things. But when someone just stares at me, usually I say hello, just to be a bit friendly. So they know that, you know, um, I can speak English and I am from the UK. <laughs> When I teach children, when I obviously I teach children, I take my veil off. Yeah, um, it, my veil doesn't need to be on when the children are there. It's, it only needs to be on when the brothers are there. But sometimes by mistake or by accident, I don't take my veil off because I forget. The children know who you are. You know, they don't see that. You know, oh no, I can't see Mrs. Face. They don't say anything like that. They they are taught as normal. My sister was just a little bit concerned because of all the terror attacks that happened. She was in that, you know, if I see a Muslim sister like yourself, you know, I probably get a bit shaken and think, you know. But then I had to reassure her. But if there is sisters that are forced to wear the veil, then I guess what they need to do is somehow, you know, challenge it themselves. We work. We have children. You know, um, we go to the park, so we do everything that you guys do. You know, play PlayStation, have we? We have fun. I think, you know, if you have free speech and you have human rights, then I'd understand why, you know, a lot of countries are banning the veil because, you know, if you can wear what you like and go out and not harm anybody and not break the law, then I don't see what the point is. And if there was a ban, I would try my best to stay at home. Well, over now to Summer Yukub, a councillor for the Respect Party in Birmingham. Good to speak with you this morning. Uh, very strong case, very interesting perspective there. What's your reaction, first of all, to the vote to ban the face veils being passed in, in the lower house of the French Parliament? The first to uh, make law there. Well, I think it's a very, very in 21st century. We are seeing states tell women what they can wear and what they can't wear. Like the other people in the world, condemn countries like Saudi Arabia, and the very reason that they force women to cover up. And yet, here in Europe, we're seeing moves to tell women the force to uncover. It's in principle, women should be allowed to choose what they wear and don't wear. I think what happens, we do have a very strong reaction, and we're going to talk later about this a bit more when we discuss this issue. And 90% mm -hmm. of our viewers would like to hear that fact. That's the way that they've reacted to the story as it's presented yeah. so far. And the, the strong point seems to be that it's about being part of a community, sort of making steps to blend with the community, and that veil is a physical barrier on many levels to that. Well, frankly, I'm not surprised at the large number of people um, seeing this. Given the hysteria and the disproportionate attention on this, I'm a Muslim woman, clearly. I choose not to wear the wear hijab. Uh, and some people might find that offensive. If we go around thinking, well, like thing, we're not going to tolerate other people, where will that end? It shouldn't be about whether you like something or not. It should be about, are they harming you? And there are many, many ways to integrate it. If we're going to say that we can't communicate, if we can't each other, I see you right now, I'm talking to a camera, but we're communicating fine. Uh, I should dictate to one of this, and systematic, I feel, is a more deep-rooted um, aversion and suspicion towards Muslim Islam in general. There is this fear. And I can imagine that some people may look at something like, well, a bit alien to me. Remember that in this country, simply being black or Asian was seen as white. So I don't think that that uh, right criteria, especially as a which prides itself on its dumbs, on its rights, and it's a live and let live attitude. Well, you've raised a lot of fascinating interest there. I'm, I know we're going to come back and talk a bit more about this.